Making six figures as a freelancer is a dream of anyone ready to quit the micromanaging corporate world of today, but is it possible in the gig economy where nearly everybody is a freelancer? Hi, my name is Amber Campbell. I'm an indie author and a freelance editor, and today we're going to go ahead and talk about it. Fiverr has become synonymous with freelance success thanks to individuals like Alexander Versulo and Georgia Austin, who are both large in their own rights here on YouTube. Alexandra Fasulo put up her first gig in 2015, and Austin followed not too much later in 2020. Both freelancers have made considerable strides in their businesses and brands, but they also took similar paths to get started to earn six figures doing what they love. There are five major points to consider when optimizing your gig. And while there are four points I think most of us will agree with and have probably heard a million times, there is a fifth point that might rile up some feathers who are hoping to join Fiverr as a way to uh, get rich quick, if you will. The first topic we're gonna talk about is niche. Now, for anyone who doesn't know, niche is, among numerous definitions, a place, employment, status, or activity for which a person or thing is best fitted. If you've done research into the gig economy, or even for YouTube, video and content making, you've probably heard that the way the clients or views is by niching down what you offer to find your ideal buyer or audience. What most sellers aren't doing well on Fiverr is they're going too broad. They're offering, for example, web design, and they're just saying, I will design your website. That's going to hit so many different points for anybody who's looking for it. On the other hand, creating a gig where you design a dog grooming website in Southern Louisiana might be a little bit too specific and lead clients think you won't be the right person. So what's the middle ground? If you design websites, you already know a restaurant or food truck website is going to be so different from a dog grooming services or game shop selling consoles website. Therefore, break down the similar structures of each design and advertise it in that way. Design your business website becomes design your restaurant website or design your brick and mortar shops website. This small change in wording lets buyers know immediately what this gig specializes in and whether they're on the right track to finding the seller that speaks to them before they even send you that message. My personal experience is I offer beta reading in young adult and middle grade manuscripts, and there are more than 3,200 beta reading gigs offered on Fiverr as of March 2024, but if you change that to beta reading YA, you come up with a few hundred. That alone should speak volumes. We're not trying to go for the 3,000 clients who have 3,000 options. We want to go for the few hundred, if you can get below a hundred, that's even better, uh, that know that whatever service we're offering is exactly what they're looking for. Niche down, find exactly what you want to do, how you want to offer it, and follow that with a passion. And my ring light just died, but that's okay. Next up is going to be price and specifically optimizing your gig extras. So let's start off with a major piece of advice that you need, which is do not offer any service for $5. This is where the Fiverr name came from, yes, but we no longer want to do this. If a buyer sees that you're offering a service for $5, they're going to think one of two things. A, you're brand new and don't have any experience in the service that you're offering, or B, you are so desperate for work you will take anything. On the other hand, you don't want to be a new seller on the Fiverr site and offer a service, regardless of what it is, for $500 if you have zero testimonials to your profile. No one's going to take that either. Like niche, there is a middle ground, and I'm going to go ahead and dive into why it's important to kind of undersell yourself in the beginning so that you can get the earnings you deserve later on. So for me, when I started back in 2022, I offered a 50,000 word manuscript beta read for $35. With my very first order I got, which actually took two months after I made it, just FYI, I broke down the time it took to read the story as well as what it took to write my report. It was about four or five pages, and my hourly rate came out to be around $5 an hour. Is that livable? No, of course not. However, I did this for about three more months at that price range, and once I hit level one seller and had those 10 reviews on my uh, page, I was able to raise it to $50. And now, I'm a level two, I now offer that same service for $75. You won't make six figures in your first year on Fiverr unless you do ghostwriting or translation. And I am talking only about the writing categories since that's where my experience is. 
However, getting paid to read was one of the dreams I've had since I was a child. So the fact that I'm making more money beta reading young adult manuscripts now than I make at my part-time day job is a dream come true for me. And I just want to remind you guys to start off low while you're a new seller because getting those early reviews, especially if you're someone who does not have a portfolio or testimonials yet, is going to be crucial to create jobs that will steadily come in for you. Something else you can do early on is to optimize your gig extras on Fiverr. So I believe in the beginning you have two. I think it goes up to seven. I'm not completely sure. I just do the ones that are uh, relevant to what I offer. However, you want to think of something that's similar to what you do that maybe your buyer did not yet consider. So for example, I offered beta reading. I also offered a gig extra where I would review or write the query letter if they were submitting to literary agents. I offered a gig extra that included, hey, if you don't know what agents you want to submit to, I'll do the research and I'll find them for you. Now that I have more than two, I also offer the synopsis writing, which again, I started at $40. Now it's $60 for me to do that. Um, I can also offer the copy editing for the first 5,000 words or line editing for the first 2,500 so that they know regardless of what I thought of it as a reader, here's what I think of it as an editor and somebody who has been in the publishing industry. So think of that because those gig extras, especially things that they may not have considered yet, are the things that's going to help you ensure that each order is the maximum amount of earnings that you can get. So start low, raise gradually, and optimize those gig extras. Third up is photos, which might seem a little strange, but you always want to include your face in your photos on Fiverr. In the ever-expanding world of AI, there are so many buyers who do not want their work coming from someone who's not a human. And we are not going to talk about the AI detection tools, which are like wrong 95% of the time. <laughs> We're just going to talk about the photos. So include a photo of yourself in that first initial gig image on Fiverr that people see. The rest of them do not have to have your face in them. You don't have to be in them at all. I don't see a need for that, to be honest. That has not affected me at all. But um, if you're not comfortable showing your face, you could show part of it, like do it from the side, or maybe it shows you like head bent down working on something. But the whole faceless idea, face, let me see, faceless community in social media, YouTube, um, even here on you know freelancing gigs, it, it's kind of dying out. Especially with the new generations, you've got Gen Z and Gen Alphas right on their heels, and they want to see who it is that they're talking to. They want to see who they're following. They want to see where their information is coming from, like who it's coming from. And so showing your face is the best way you're going to gain trust with them. And any older individuals, you know, myself, Millennial, Gen X, those ones are going to be okay whether you show your face or not. But we also want to make sure that if showing our face doesn't deter them, but it gains them, we need to do it so we can get everybody's view on us. You also want to aim for professional photos. You do not have to hire a photographer to get professional headshots by any means. The background I'm behind is probably fine, to be honest. Um, you probably want to avoid outside just because it can be a very chaotic, very busy background. But just go in your bedroom, find like a blank wall, wear something professional, business casual, um, take a picture of yourself and use that. You can do like two or three different backgrounds, things like that, just so it shows you maybe in different areas so that it's just not the same photo over and over because that can be a red flag as well for some buyers. Um, but basically what we're trying to do is show them that we're a real person and that we're not AI, that we're not going to use AI. I don't see an, an issue with AI in terms of like you know, creating content, things like that. Um, I don't use it in my writing or my editing. I don't put anything into those things. And then I'm also a person where if my client comes to me and says they want nothing in Google Drive because Google Drive has been helping AI, I will do everything much for it. So just depends on your buyer and what they want, but always aim for your face in a photo whenever possible. All right, next up, this is probably gonna be the shortest section because I think it's the most obvious. It is keywords. So for those who don't know, keywords is basically what helps the site and your buyers find you based on what they're searching for. So for me, my gig title is, I will beta read your young adult manuscript. My five keyword choices are beta reader, beta reader YA, young adult, manuscript critique, and beta read. If you can't tell, I'm serious about the uh, young adult tag because I only read YA and middle grade fiction. If you have an adult anything, I do not want to read it, and I only read new adult if it is crucial for the characters to be aged up for that storyline. Um, I've had someone book me for nonfiction, let them know I don't do that, contacted customer support, they removed it, 
you know, so it wouldn't count against me. They were very nice about it. Um, so, yeah, just, I only read YA. <laughs> but that is very crucial for my keyword tag so that I get the right person. At the end of the day, it's important to realize that not everyone will search for the same terms. Put them up on screen. Beta reading, beta reader YA, and beta reader young adult all pull different results, which means sometimes you'll have to be a little repetitive in your tags and keywords in order to be noticed by the largest group. As you can see, the last one actually had my picture in the top row. The other ones, I was nowhere there. So, and yet all of those tags are tags that I have. The tags on your, the back end positive keywords can only be so long, so I can't necessarily do um, beta reader, young adult together. I just have one of each. But I also include young adult, beta reader, and manuscript as terms in my geek description to help. But those five positive keywords are going to be the most important. Just make sure that you put in there exactly what the niche is, as well as the overarching, overarching, sorry, um, uh, gig service that you're offering. So this might be the longest section, and this is the one that's probably going to rile up some feathers, but it is experience. And I'm going to dive into a IRL experience that I saw. So firstly, if you're looking to get rich quick, the field that I'm going to talk about, writing and publishing, it's not for you. Um, I earned my Bachelor of Arts in Creative Writing. I spent nearly two years as an intern at a literary agency. I spent two academic years teaching writing and reading skills at community colleges. And I've critiqued numerous short stories and full-length manuscripts for colleagues and peers. I had the experience up front, so when I was offering a beta read for $35 in 2022, authors requested my service. If you want to get into a field, uh, Fiverr and any other freelancing platform is not the way to do it. I have seen this with ghostwriting specifically. Uh, as I mentioned in a previous video, I'm a member of Alexandra Fasulo's uh, freelancing community over on Facebook. And a freelancer made a post sometime last year that they just got their first ghostwriting gig and they were excited and they wanted tips on how to do it because they've never done it before. The comments were flooded, asking them why they would offer a service they've never done before. And their response, I kid you not, was, how will I learn until I do it? That, that, that's the point. We don't play with someone else's money and time. Ghostwriting is expensive. I don't know if they paid you a couple hundred, a thousand. We don't learn skills with someone else's dime, especially when they're not paying us to learn a skill. They're paying us to perform the skill. So writing is hard. Anyone who tells you otherwise is the D-bag who got B's on the essays they BS'd in high school, uh, even though we all know those teachers really didn't care that much. They were just more happy that you had finished an assignment. So to write authentic copy and nonfiction, whatever it is, it's hard. And fiction um, can be even more difficult because those readers are ruthless and they will tear your work apart if it is not written well. So do not gamble on someone else's dime. Have the experience up front. You do not have to be an expert in your field by any means. Um, I think Fasulo had been doing copywriting for about a year, I think, if that, um, when she started doing it. And she started with $5 blogs that went up to like $25. And that's what she did until she became a Fiverr Pro. It's $25 blogs. So it, this is not the area to go into without experience because you will be found very quickly and these writers take their jobs very seriously whether you're working with authors like i am whether you are working with someone who wants to put a book out but they don't have those skills you need to be the one with the skills you have skillshare udemy community college courses books youtube videos you can gain the understanding through affordable means and a degree is not required in this field for writing but if you're editing, you definitely need a degree or tons of courses behind you or nobody will take you seriously, in all honesty. Niche, price, photos, keywords, and experience before you start posting gigs. These are the five things you need to have in mind as you optimize your Fiverr gigs and really start bringing in that steady income from freelance work. It's going to take time. I know that Georgia Austin was able to make six figures, I think, in her first 12 months. Um, but I also know she came from a business background. So if you have no idea how to run a business, that might be way too overwhelming for you in and of itself. And again, you can do courses on that as well. You don't need a bachelor's or a master's for that. But if you're on Fiverr right now, um, how long did it take you to get to level one seller or level two? Or if you're brand new, 
you know, what is your niche? What are you doing? Are you in writing translation like I am? Or are you in something else? Um, as always, if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, like, share, comment, all the clicky button things. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for joining me, and I will see you all next time. Bye. There was once a day that I would pray for you. I'd go and misbehave just so you'd notice too. Sneaking looks up and down from across the room.